I'm not here to dictate timelines or terms. Our support uh, to Israel's right to defend itself is ironclad, as you've heard me say a number of times, and that's not going to change. It has not even been 10 days since Biden's top official said this, virtually giving Israel an absolute free run in its war with Hamas. Just a week later, on December 25th, Iran claimed that Israel had assassinated a senior commander of its elite Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC. This was actually the second time, just this month, that Israel killed IRGC officers in Syria. And now, Lloyd Austin's declaration may be back to haunt Joe Biden like the ghosts of Christmas past. The death of Saeed Razi Mousavi is being seen as one of the biggest threats that may turn the Gaza war into an all-out Middle East conflict, something that US President Joe Biden has been trying very hard to avoid. Now Iran and its proxies are issuing one threat after another to Israel. Can America and its Middle East partners defuse the situation? Or will the US end up getting sucked up into yet another foreign war? It all began with an alleged Israeli airstrike on its neighbor, Syria. The attack hit Saeed Zainab locality, which lies south of Israel's capital, Damascus. Israel has been doing similar airstrikes ever since its latest war with Hamas began. But the 25th December strike was a sharp reaction in Iran. The Raisi government claimed that Israel had assassinated a senior officer of the IRGC. Saeed Razi Mousavi was stationed in Syria as an advisor and coordinator for Iranian and Syrian militaries. More importantly, he was a key figure in the axis of resistance. What's that? Well, it's an informal group of militias in the Middle East which are supported by Iran. They are all violently opposed to America and Israel. Israel has in the past claimed that Mousavi used to supply weapons to Hezbollah in Lebanon and other Iran-backed groups in Syria and Iraq. Interestingly, Mousavi was with General Qasem Soleimani when he was killed in 2020. Soleimani was the chief of IRGC's elite Quds force and was assassinated by America with a drone strike in Iraq. Mousavi himself has survived multiple assassination attempts. His killing, allegedly by Israel, was the second instance of an Iranian officer dying in Syria just this month. On the 2nd of December, Iran had claimed that two IRGC officials had been murdered while on an advisory mission to Syria. Iran supports the Bashar al-Assad government in Syria, claims to be helping the country get rid of alleged foreign-backed militants. After Iran announced Mosabi's death, Israel did not confirm or deny its role. But they did drop a hint. Daniel Hagari, a spokesperson for the Israeli military, said he won't comment on foreign reports. He then added, and I quote, the IDF obviously has a job to protect the security interests of Israel, unquote. Meanwhile, threats have been pouring in hard and fast from the top echelons of the Iranian government. President Raisi said that Israel will definitely pay the price for killing Mosavi. His foreign ministry said that Iran reserves the right to respond to Israel at a time and place of its choosing. Even militant groups like Hezbollah, which are backed by Iran, slammed Israel's action and issued warnings. Amidst all this, on the same day, America and Iran-backed militias traded fire in Iraq. USA claimed that three of its soldiers were injured in a drone strike on an airbase in Iraq on Christmas Day. American forces then launched a counterattack, barely hours later. All of this has ratcheted up tensions in the Middle East, which has already been on the tenterhooks hooks because of the Houthis of Yemen. All this is likely to have ruined Joe Biden's Christmas. It has been two short years since he claimed to have ended America's forever war by messily pulling US troops out of Afghanistan. But it has been two long months since the Gaza war broke out, 
and Biden has been trying hard to prevent it from becoming a spark in a tinderbox. But with the latest action in Syria, America is once again staring at the possibility of getting trapped in a Middle East conflict. And that too in an election year. All eyes are now on USA and its partners in the Middle East. Will they be able to stop this Mowasi affair from blowing up into a regional Armageddon? It will be a difficult road, especially because of America's actions at the UN. The UN Security Council recently passed a resolution on the Gaza war. The resolution pushed for sending more humanitarian aid to Gaza, but what made headlines was that it made no mention of a ceasefire. This was because America had objected to use the phrase urgent and sustainable cessation of hostilities. Earlier, Washington had vetoed a resolution pushing for a ceasefire in Gaza. The ironclad support for Israel obviously made Arab and other Muslim countries angry. Now America's my way or highway attitude at the UN may come back to haunt it if it tries to convince everyone in the Middle East to keep calm. The other hurdle for Joe Biden, of course, will be Israel's domestic politics. Just yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was heckled by families of hostages demanding their immediate release. Netanyahu also visited Gaza, where the Israel army had lost 18 soldiers in just three days. With his battered reputation at stake, who knows how Netanyahu might react in case Iran decides to get aggressive. Apart from some public appeals to protect civilians in Gaza, the Biden administration has stood by Israel resolutely as it goes about its mission to annihilate Hamas. But if Iran follows up on its threats to Israel following Mosavi's death, then this will not remain a limited war anymore. And America may well have to rethink its Middle East strategy.